Hey folks, how you doing? So uh, I was going to do a little quick end tutorial and then I noticed that in my background I have the uh, uh, right uh, perfect and direct view of the uh, fireworks that are going on during the 4th of July. Well today is the 4th of July and I was to do a quick uh, video tutorial for you guys and then I realized maybe I'll just wait a little bit for the fireworks to begin so I can do actually a video tutorial during the fireworks. So let's come back after this and do our video tutorial which is going to be a Q&A on one of the questions that have come up online during the fireworks. Okay folks, so the uh, fireworks have just started in the background here. Um, I'm going to take you guys, I was watching it for a little minute, it looks like they're just taking a quick break. I figured I'll get started here and then maybe take you at the end outside so you can see what's going on. Boston fireworks for the 4th of July are always a big uh, deal. So, you know, it's a long, long fireworks show. But anyway, so uh, I wanted to share with you the, uh, during this uh, process, the answer a question that had come up online regarding my protocol for managing uh, perforations in terms of the, you know, hemostasis and controlling the blood flow as well as disinfection of the perforation space prior to its um, management in terms of repair. I think that's a very good question that deserves its own uh, little video in the background of 4th of July. And uh, basically what is going on with the uh, perforations is when they do occur, it's very important that you repair a perforation as soon as possible. Immediately, if a perforation occurs in the fecal floor or any place where you can, when you do have access to it, where you can see it, you need to repair it right away. In order to do that, you need to do two things. One of them is to disinfect the site around the perforation so you make sure that your repair is devoid of any microbes and antigens. And at the same time, you need to also make sure that you um, uh, have hemostasis. And by that, I mean that there is no excessive fluid and flow of the blood coming out of the perforation site. And the reason for that is because such type of um, hemorrhage and uh, wetness will interfere with the proper bonding between your um, repair material, in this case, the putty material, as well as the, uh, the dentinal surface of the perforation where the material has to bond. It looks like the, uh, I, can, I don't know if you can hear the, a little bit of uh, uh, sounds in the background with the uh, fireworks, but it looks like it's restarting soon. In order to manage the perforation, the best way uh, to, to do that for this infection would be to use hypochlorite. Now you may say, Ali, hypochlorite is highly um, inflammatory, so how can I be using that? Well, if you do use hypochlorite in the concentrations of uh, one, Two two percent, somewhere around one and a half percent or so, it's been shown to be less cytotoxic to the cells, and you know, including the stem cells. In fact, that is the correct concentration of hypochlorite to use for regeneration. So that amount of hypochlorite concentration is not going to be a problem. And in fact, if you have a sterile cotton pellet or a sponge that you can uh, put about you know one percent, one and a half percent hypochlorite in, and then um, press against the um, uh, area of the perforation and hold for a good minute or two, you are going to, and that's actually a key point here, is that you need to be patient and you need to keep the cotton pellet in place for a couple of minutes. Look, the bleeding time in some people is fairly long and this will actually create a clot and you know denature the protein so that you can have a little bit of natural barrier against the blood flow cotton pellet for a full uh, minute or two in the spot, 1% concentration of chloride, that will disinfect the space and at the same time manage the hemostasis for you. Now, if the perforation site is very large and the hemorrhage is quite extensive, you may have to use some type of a gel foam or a, um, um, a collar coat or a collar plug or any of the collagen type barriers that can be basically placed against the material that are non-inflammatory and they will uh, resolve and dissolve on their own you got to use those and um, in those situations um, you can also use calcium sulfate which is in fact a, a putty material that you mix up and you place and it will set and that will give you the probably the driest type of a field but I think the calcium sulfate is a little bit messy so I always prefer a color coat or color, uh, color gel or any of those uh, materials that can give you a little bit of a surface however if you're using the putty material to repair your um, um, 
your perforation, especially the facet putty, then having a little bit of extrusion of the material in a form of a, uh, a concave extrusion of the material has not been shown to cause any type of a problem. Therefore, first of all, because it's very biological, also because it's hydrophilic, and uh, in fact, it's so biological that cementum will grow right over it. So I think that kind of sums up the answer to the whole thing. It's uh, the use of hypochlorite with 1% to 1.5% um, hypochlorite in a sterile sponge uh, to immediately disinfect, isolate the, the area, and place the pellet on it for a minute or two to uh, stop the bleeding, and then immediately repair with a facet putty. And then on top of that, you can uh, place the new material that's uh, going to be available soon called ERM, which is an endo-restorative material, which is a form of a hydrophilic resin incorporated in a bi-ceramic base, and it's a dual cure. So that's the, uh, the whole thing, and it looks like the fireworks are starting again in the background. I'm going to take you guys so you can see what's going on, okay? Fireworks are always spectacular, very long and very elaborate. So we have the Boston State House here in this area and just kind of panning towards the fireworks, which is right over the Charles River by the Esplanade area of Boston right between the Boston and Cambridge line is always spectacular. Well, this is gonna go on for a little while. I'm gonna take you guys here too long to watch it, but just wanted to wish all of you a happy 4th of July. And we're gonna have a lot more videos for you in uh, the rest of the year. Where we will then know, I'm Ali Nisse, and let's save some tea.